editor in unity lesson 17 so now that we've got uh, the majority of the work uh, done here for our node editor um, one thing that we can do one thing that we should do now is just finish up all the functionality for our particular node so what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, right click over nodes and not get this context menu on a different menu so I can delete nodes I want to show all the properties for the nodes in, in the um, the, uh, the property view over here um, and that will pretty much do that for nodes. And then um, in the final lesson, we will actually uh, draw the grid in the background, just so I can show you guys how that works. All right. So let's start by um, actually taking care of our context menu here. And so to do that, uh, I just need to detect whether or not we are in fact over a, um, a particular node and then decide which context menu I'm going to actually work with, okay? So let's go back into our work view where we are drawing our context menu over here. So over here, there's our process context menu. All right, so what I want to do um, when I um, actually come in here, all right, or when I come into the events over here, so if I uh, right click, okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, find whether or not I'm in one of the nodes, all right, so we actually have the current graph, okay, so we're getting the graph over here. <laughs> So what I want to do is I actually want to detect if I'm um, over a particular node. And this context menu is then going to take a um, context ID. All right, so it's going to be an integer. And that will determine which context menu we show, whether or not we're over the graph or we're over a node, OK? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another flag over here. So I'm going to say bool um, in node. All right, or we can call it over node. How about that? It is equal to false when we first do our right click. So then uh, what we want to do is we want to check to see if the curve graph first is not null, like so. So if it's not null, uh, then we want to check to see if the curve graph dot nodes is dot count is greater than zero. So if we pass all those tests, Basically, we want to do and roll through a, um, another int or another loop, sorry. And we want to say if it's less than the curve graph dot nodes dot count, and we'll say i plus plus, like so. All right. So basically, what we want to do is we want to say if the uh, curve graph dot nodes i dot node rect that contains uh, the mouse pause, then we will set that flag. All right, we'll say uh, over node is equal to true. All right, so then once we're done with this particular loop here, we can say if over node, we are going to, if not, if not over node, how about that? We'll start with that one first we're going to process our normal context menu. All right, so we're going to put in a value of zero. Else, we are going to draw the node version of the context menu. All right, so now we're going to come down and we are going to um, divvy up our particular um, menus over here. So I'm going to say if uh, context ID is equal to zero. Then we're going to draw this one. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to draw this menu. And we're going to say if context ID is equal to one, then we're going to draw the node version of the context menu. So we're going to then take this code here just to speed things up a little bit. And I'm going to remove these ones and I'm just going to call the uh, delete node. Actually, I only need that. I just need that one. And so I'm gonna, going to set this to an ID of five so we can utilize the same context callback. All right. So then I need one more case down here. Like so. And we are going to create a new uh, delete um, 
function inside of our node utils. So let's go do that now. So if I go over into my um, node utils over here, I want to create a new static function. So I'm going to say public static uh, void delete node. All right. So that gets that all up and running. And we're going to send in a node. So we're going to send in a node base. We'll call it a cur node. All right. So then I can go back to my work view. And I can say dt uh, node utils like so dot delete node and we'll send in this or we'll send in the current node and in order to get the current node we're going to actually need to know which um, node we were over when we hit that so I'm going to have to keep track of that so I'm going to have to create a new int and we're going to call this the um, delete node ID equals zero. All right, so we're gonna copy that. And I'm just gonna always reset it every single time we do this. And over node, I'm gonna set it to whatever I is currently. That will allow me to actually access that. All right, and I don't know why you are showing up red. Let's see what Unity is telling me. <clears throat> oh, well, it's just because we're down here. All right. So down in our node details over here, what I want to do is I want to send in not a node. I just want to send in the node ID and the um, current graph. So node graph, it's current graph, because I need to remove it from the list. All right. So we'll go back to our work view, and we're going to send in the delete node ID and the current graph. Nice and simple. All right, so that's good there. So then uh, let's go over to our node utils and let's get this all worked out. So I'm gonna come in here and just always first check to make sure that our graph hasn't become null. Does not equal null. All right, there we go. And um, I'm gonna say if uh, current graph dot nodes dot count is greater than or equal to node ID. All right, because we want, want to make sure that we haven't already deleted it before. All right, uh, we just want to make sure that we're not past our, our index bounds or anything like that. So I'm going to say GT dot node base. Uh, we're going to actually get a reference to our node. So delete node equals cur graph dot nodes. We're going to send in that node ID. That gives us that particular node. So then we want to check to make sure that that delete node is not null. Oops. Delete node does not equal null. All right. So if we pass this, then we can actually start to remove this. So we're going to say curgraph.nodes dot remove at node ID. All right. So now it's removed from the node list on our current graph. But we still have a reference to it, so it's still existing in me memory there. So then I can say game object dot destroy immediate. All right, I can say delete node and use the true flag. So we delete assets and then refresh the asset database and save assets. All right, so we say asset database dot refresh. Easy. All right, so let's go and test all that stuff out. Make sure we didn't get any errors there. All right, so let's take a look at our database over here. And if I right click over a node, I get that context menu. But if I right click over anywhere out in the graph, I get that. So then let's delete. And in fact, we were able to delete the node. So let's delete this node. And you'll notice that now we are still drawing that line over there. So what we need to do is we need to check just to make sure in the add node here if it's um, occupied and not null instead of that. So we're going to say if a input a is occupied and input a dot input node does not equal null, 
else we're going to clear it out. So we're going to say input a dot is occupied is equal to false. And we want to do the same thing over here. Uh, input b dot input node does not equal null. Else input b. Oops. Let's just copy this. Input b. There we go. So that should take care of the line for us. There we go. So now we can go and create a new, uh, oops, not a new graph, create a new float node. And I can go and connect this guy up and we've recreated everything. So perfect. That is now working out beautifully for us. So the last thing that I really want to do is get properties to show up inside of um, the uh, property view over here. And so um, whenever I have something selected in the property view, I just want to actually display its properties. Okay. So uh, I need the property view for this now. So let's go into the views, node property view. Alrighty. So now when we're in this particular area, we can say, uh, we can first check, we can say if uh, curd graph uh, does not equal null. All right. And then we can check to see if the curd graph dot selected node does not equal null. Then what we want to do is we want to show the properties on our particular um, on our particular node. So we need to actually add a new um, method to our node base. All right. So this is going to be the public virtual uh, void draw node properties. All right, because this, this is just an editor thing. All right. And so this is going to be a really passive um, uh, method. So inside of the float node, we're just going to override that. So we're going to say public override void. I sh should actually just override. Sorry. Draw node properties. Yep, we can draw the base if we really want to. <clears throat> and so inside of the um, float node, I'm literally just going to draw an editor GUI layout dot uh, float field, just to, for time's sake. And we'll give it a label, call it float value. And we will say node value. All right, so in the add node, we can now override that. So we come up here, say public override, draw node properties. All right, so then we, we want to really just display our sum. So I don't need to allow anyone to update it. And actually, that brings up a good point. We actually need to allow people to update this value equals that. There we go. So in the add node, we just don't. We don't want people to update it, so we're just going to say editor uh, GUI layout dot float field, and we say sum, and we're going to say node sum. Bam. All right. So then in the property view, uh, we're going to say curve graph dot selected node dot null. Then we're going to say curve graph dot selected node dot draw node properties. Bam, and now we should actually have some vote fields over here. And we don't have anything selected. So if we select, there you go. Now we're getting our particular dealios. And so you'll notice that we're actually starting to get a weird little error where we say getting controls zero, zero's position in a group with only zero controls. And this is because um, Unity is, has two passes to the GUI. Um, there's one pass for layout and then one pass for actually drawing. And so what we need to do is we actually need to create a um, Boolean value. All right. Oh, excuse me. Inside of um, our uh, view. So we're going to say public um, bool uh, show properties equals false. 
All right. And so uh, what we want to do is we want to first check um, in a layout. All right. So we're going to say if e, so it's an event thing, if e dot type is equal to event type dot layout. So event type dot layout. So what we're going to do is we're going to check here. All right. So we're going to say um, if paragraph does not equal null. like so and if all that passes then we're going to say show properties and I need to get rid of these guys so I get my IntelliSense back so we're going to say show properties equals true right so we can always um, come in here and first set show properties to equal false, like that. So then up here, when we go to draw, all we need to now check for is if show properties, like so. There we go. So that should take care of that error. So let's clear it out. Oh, now we now we're getting a null reference. And we're getting a null reference right here. All right. All right, so let's get rid of this first. And what I can do is just do an else statement down here. Say show properties is false. And we'll do another else. Probably not the best way to do this, but I am trying to get this done quick. So let's take a look at that now. So we're still getting an object reference null. Let me clear this out. Let me close the window. No. Alrighty. So let's just turn this off. There we go. All right, so now let's turn it back on and see what happens. All right. All right, so this is being pesky. So I think um, what I'm going to do is actually move it somewhere else. So let's do somewhere else here. Let's move it over to the uh, the graph view. So um, inside of our update uh, graph GUI, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in that uh, layout check. So I'm going to say if um, e dot type is equal to event type dot layout. I am going to set some sort of flag on the parent itself. All right, so I'm going to say um, if uh, selected node does not equal null, like so. All right, then I'm going to ha set a flag inside of my script here. So I'm going to say public bool show properties equals false. Okay, so we're going to say show properties is equal to true. equals true. Very good. All right. <clears throat> so then down here, when we actually do deselect everything, let's uh, set that show properties to equal false. All right, so that, that should work out hopefully. So now in our property view, again, let's check now to see if uh, curve graph dot show properties actually we'll just do if we're not showing any properties we're first going to just display some labels say editor GUI layout dot label field is equal to none else let's actually draw so we're going to say cur graph dot selected node dot draw node properties and also let's um, 
to a GUI layout dot space of something like 60, just to push it out of the, the title in the properties up here. All right, so let's see if we still get um, those drawing errors. And that looks like it took care of everything. Sweet. So we can come in here and now we can change the value of our float nodes or do something like 12 or 10 and two. And what I wanna do is actually compute the sum in the node. So all I need to do is go to my add node now. And we can really just check, we can say update node GUI. Uh, let's just go in here and we can create another function, but all I'm gonna do is just say if input a dot is occupied and uh, input b dot is occupied, then we're both connected. So then let's just take uh, the value uh, that's being passed into us, all right? So what I wanna do is I want to um, cast both of my no input nodes to floats, all right? So I'm gonna say gt uh, float node. We're gonna call this node a, oops, node a equals um, gt float node, right? Because they're all at, uh, they're all at gt node base. So I just want to make sure that I get it into the right format. So input node, and we just want to copy that off, paste that down, say node B, input B, input node, and then again, we'll check just to make sure that node A does not equal null, and node B does not equal null. Then we'll add them all up. And we'll say the uh, node sum is equal to node a dot node value plus node b dot node value, like so. And that should be that. All right. Else, so we're going to actually then say else, if we don't have any connections, then node sum is equal to 0, 0.0f, like that. Perfect. And there we go, we got 12. So if I change this to something like 30, we now have 32. Not because this guy, so let's change this to something like 20. So now we should have 50. All right, so now we are working and if we delete a node in here, we have a sum of zero, so I have to make a new float node. Connect this back up and we'll set this to something like 12. There we go, now we got 42. All right, so that is the end of um, that lesson or this particular lesson. Thanks so much. <laughs>
we write the height like so. All right, so then what we want to do is uh, draw some lines. So we're going to utilize the, the handles again for this. So I'm going to open up handles dot end begin and end GUI like that. We'll set the color. So we'll say handles dot color is equal to a, a new color. And we're going to say grid color dot R. And we'll just copy this three times over. And we'll call this G. And then we'll pass in that grid opacity. So grid opacity. There we go. All right, so then all we need to do is do a for loop. So that way we can loop through all of our width and height uh, divisions. OK, so we're going to say for int uh, x equals 0. All right, we're going to say x is less than width divs and x plus plus. All right. All we have to do is say handles dot uh, draw line. And what we want to do is we want to create a new vector. So new vector three, and we want to take the uh, grid spacing uh, times our current x value. So we're going to say grid spacing times x, like so, and then we'll pass in zero for the others. Alrighty, so there's that one, and then we want to say a new vector three of uh, grid spacing uh, times x. And we will take the uh, view rect dot height. So we're drawing the vertical lines here in 0f. There we go. Just like so. Alrighty. So that gets our, all that set up. Okay, so now all we need to do is copy this off once more. And we're going to do the height div. So let's copy this guy. Actually, make that lowercase there. All right. Height divs. And uh, this is going to be Y instead, just to keep it clear. All right. OK, so then um, I'm going to get rid of this because we want to do the uh, Y. So we're going to do uh, grid spacing uh, times Y. There we go. And then we want to do the uh, view rec dot width. So we move it along, view rec dot width. And we'll do the same for the height. There we go. All right, so that basically is that. And we want to reset back our handles.color to color.white so we don't um, inherit that opacity change or this color change. All right. So now we just need to call this, and that's going to be called from our uh, work view over here. So I'm going to launch my work view because I want it to only be in the work view. Alrighty. So then, right when we create the GUI box, we want to draw our grid. So we'll draw it right here. So it's after the box and before the nodes. So we're going to say uh, draw grid. All right. So then, all we need to call is gtutils dot draw grid. And we want to send in our current view rect. And we want to send in the spacing of something like 50. And the opacity is going to be something like 0.15f. And the color is going to be color.white for now. All right, so let's take a look and see what that gives us. If all went well, we should have a grid in the background of our node editor. All right, and it should update. Yep. We're all good to go. And we now have a fully fledged, simple node editor that calculates the sum of two flow values. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, another cool technique that we can do, we can start to layer these grids. So I'm actually going to make this um, something like 80 or 80. Yeah, there you go. And then I'm going to draw another set of lines on top of that. We'll do 0.05 for that. And then let's put this to 40. And we'll keep that 0.15 and see what we get. So we can start to layer the grids together to get different effects. <clears throat> Something like that. Let's see what this is. There we go. So 
I actually want to make these guys a little bit lighter. This guy is going to be stronger. Let's see if we go to 50. Let's see what happens here. Well, anyways, you can start to layer these things together. There you go. Now you're starting to see it there. So let's go to something like 60. There we go. So now we have more bold lines every three units in our grid. All right. So that concludes uh, Lesson 18, Draw on the Grid. Thanks so much. <laughs>